those of you that had the, uh, the, the older cars and pickups and uh, Thesley and uh, Mr. Bryce and uh, Kevin uh, brought his uh, out there and there may be more, but maybe more that uh, brought theirs, but uh, thank you. It just added to the nuance as you pulled onto the campus this morning. And um, I just, I can't help but think about, you know, if someone other we could, the, 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 the 80s movie, uh, Back to the Future. I mean, if you remember that, you know, starred Michael J. Fox, you know, he traveled back in time. If we could travel back in time and see this church and over the years and the decades, you know, how it has changed and evolved. And uh, man, we're blessed to be a part of this today. Amen? We're so blessed. There's two scriptures I want to share with you today. And uh, the first is from Matthew 16. Matthew chapter 16. I'm not going to have you stand as I read this passage, um, but I do want you to listen very, very closely. Very, very closely. And Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And I have to believe those words rung true to the early founding fathers and mothers of this church. They understood that. Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades or hell will not overpower it. Amen? Amen. I will give you the kings of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And then the other scripture I want to share with you this morning is 1 Corinthians chapter 3. First Corinthians chapter three. It's good to hear this pages, amen. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual men, but as to men of flesh, as to infants in Christ. I gave you milk to drink, not solid food, for you were not yet able to receive it. Indeed. Even now you are not yet able, for you are still fleshly. For since there is a jealousy and strife among you, and you are not fleshly, and you uh, are, excuse me, and are you not walking like mere men? For one says, I am of Paul, and another says, I am of Apollos. Are you not mere men? Now watch this. What then uh, is Apollos? And what is Paul, servants through whom you believed? Even as the Lord gave opportunity to each one, I planted, Apollos watered, but it was God. I love the King James wording here. God gave the increase. The New American Standard says, but God, um, excuse me, let me get back to my text here. Paul's water, but God was causing the growth. So then neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but God who causes the growth. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, but each will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we, we are God's fellow workers. <laughs> You are God's field. You and I, we are God's building today. We look back through the ages. I mean, 1874 was the beginning year of this church. What a powerful thing that happened at that time. As I've shared with you before, the, uh, this church was founded on the very heels of the American uh, Civil War. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of turmoil and a lot of heartache and a lot of difficulty. In fact, many are buried in our cemetery that uh, fought and died in that war. But today, as we look back over these decades, and we see the change that God has brought about in the life of this church. A moment ago, I had you to, to just look around and visualize some, or even maybe not look around, but think in your mind of people that used to be with us. I know that many of them were family members. In fact, there are many today that maybe hesitate on coming to homecoming because it's not a joyous occasion, you know, for you because you, you still mourn and you grieve, and God understands that. It is my prayer that God will comfort you and give you peace today that only he can and that today's time together will be a true reunion time. But I jotted down some words that I want to share with you 
before we transition and do our church photo and before we eat. Today, we, you and I, we celebrate life. The life that we live today is just like the lives that those who went on before us on this very piece of property. We share that life. Today, you and I, we remember their sacrifice. We remember their labor, their love, and we remember their long suffering. I say long suffering because there is no doubt that those founding fathers and mothers, and not just those in 1874, but maybe those in the 30s, in the 40s, in the 50s, in the 60s, and so on, they went through times of extreme hardship to keep this church strong and what it is today. You know, the many of you that's on social media, you probably noted the picture that I took yesterday and uploaded to Facebook, a picture of standing on the sidewalk in the steeple. Actually, that picture was about a couple or three years old. But I was walking in one day, and I just happened to look up. It was one of those days I had a lot on my mind, and I tend to keep my head down when I have a lot on my mind and I'm walking. But that day, I, that particular day, I just paused, and I lifted my head up, and I God just drew my eyes to the cross at the top of the steeple and those beautiful blue clouds, and man, it was just breathtaking. Chris and I were talking this morning. I said, Christian, do you know what a miracle it is for a church to stay together for 145 years? I mean, really, we smile and we may, in the inward way, sort of chuckle a little bit, but truthfully, the enemy is after any church that stands for the word of God and on the word of God and proclaims the gospel of God. He, he wants to destroy and disrupt it and divide it and call it, cause it to cease to be. But for 145 years, God has kept this place strong and vibrant in and on the word of God. Let's give the Lord a round of applause on that. Amen. You can believe that they endured difficult times, but I know it's because of their sacrifice and their love and their commitment that makes this grand old church what it is today. The devil, you can believe, as I've already said, was alive and well in those beginning days and weeks and years in 1874, and even alive and well today. Amen? Amen. We know that. We understand that. But don't you know the devil in those beginning years, he had a hankering as to what God's plans were and was for this church. It was before this building sat on this campus. It was even before the one that sat to the left of where I stand right now and to the right of where you sit that sat before this one was built. It was just down the road. Matter of fact, close to where the Ackerman property is, where this church had its beginning days. And the devil knew that God was going to do something great. And he didn't know quite how it was going to unfold and how God was going to work. In, but he knew that something God was going to do through this body of believers. He knew. He knew he had to do something. But obviously, his efforts, we know today, to, were futile. Praise yeah. the living God. Yeah. Amen. Here we stand today. In this sanctuary, underneath this steeple, that for years has stood as a testament of hope. You know, as a, there's a lot of times I drive down 421, up 421, down Holly Springs Church Road, back up Holly Springs Church Road, and it's at nighttime, it's in the daylight, and you do as well. It, but this church always stands as a, as, a, as a place of hope. No matter what kind of day you're having. It always stands as a place of hope. You see, our greatest gratitude today, Holly Springs Church family, should be to our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the founder of this church. I don't even know the first pastor's name today, but I know, as I read a moment ago in 1 Corinthians 3, Paul said, Apollos is nothing. Paul is not anything. But we, we just build on each other's work. 
We stand, you and I today, we stand on the shoulders of those who stood before us. When many of you, you tell me stories about when you were a little child. In fact, I remember, what was the trees we had out front? What were they called again? Magnolias. I remember hearing one of you tell us stories about getting your whippings out there, you know. <laughs> if you disrupt the church. And, uh, you know, you grew up here. But it was, we stand on your dads and your moms and your grandparents. We stand on their shoulders today. Younger families with younger children. The older generations counting on you today. They're counting on you. And not to throw a, a guilt trip, but let's call it a, a gospel conviction here. A word of God conviction. But you know, don't give them cause to worry about the future of this church. Be faithful. Be committed. Be dedicated. You see, as I understand this picture that we're going to take today, and unfortunately, God had other plans, because we can't do it on the front steps because it's already started raining. But this picture we're going to take today, the young, beautiful young lady a while ago that you saw standing in the baptistry is my niece. And i um, proud of her. Uh, Brian Gross, she is a professional photographer, and she's going to stand in the baptistry again today. And she did this years ago at another church I served. <laughs> Seemed like it was just yesterday. But anyway, she's going to take a picture of all of you. And in a moment, I'm going to have her come forward, and she may give you a little bit of instructions, particularly those of you families that have small children. You know, I don't know. There may be a transition or something so that the children can be easily seen. But, but nevertheless, it's not necessarily about our being seen as much as it is that we're here. We're here, and we're present, and we're, we can be counted on. And each of you can count on each other, always. But from what I understand, traditionally, the picture that takes place on the front steps takes place every 20 years. The last church portrait on the front steps of this church was in 1999, 20 years ago. Can you believe that, by the way? I came here in 98. I don't even remember, in fact, I don't even remember why I wanted it. I don't think I'm in the picture. I don't know. Maybe I was. I don't remember. But, uh, you know... <sighs> 20 years. The next picture, if we keep tradition, will be in 2039. Some of you today that were, will be pictured in this photograph, if we do, don't do it again until another 20 years, which we know we do different types of church pictures, but some of us will not appear in the next one. Something to think about, isn't it? God has allowed you to live for this moment. He's, that's why I wanted you to be here today because you are you're capturing a moment of history. This week was a moment of history for this church. I mean, think about it. Praise the living God for the church of a different denomination, the pastor of a different denomination, and of different skin color and ethnicity. We worshiped together. <laughs> Give God glory. Under the word of God. God has allowed you to live for this moment. 20 years from now. What will be the case here in this church? We pray that it will only grow and only be become stronger. You see today by you being here, you're making history. You're saying to God, your families, each other, that you've taken your stand. And you, and you are here today to grab that spiritual baton from those who've run before us. And that you can be trusted. That's what you're saying by being here today. So today I charge all of you, don't give up. Don't give in. And don't give way. Stand strong in the positions that God has sovereignly placed you in this church. This is your moment to shine. This is your period of life that those who will stand right where we stand, raising their children's children, they depend on us. And what we do now will affect them in the years to come. So as your pastor today, at this hour, 
this year, this setting, what kind of legacy are you, what kind of legacy are you leaving behind? Just think of this, this very moment. There'll be young children in other countries, states, cities, whose lives will be touched by what you do right here through your giving, through your prayers, through your going on mission efforts as we share them with you. And there'll be some that you'll reach with the gospel that you'll only get to know them when they come up to you in heaven and introduce themselves to you and say, thank you for giving. So today, in other words, through your service, sacrifice, and commitment today to Holly Springs, you're helping to continue this deep, long legacy that was started for us so very many years ago and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with the lost and dying world. And so, my challenge to you today is to pray this simple requesting prayer to the Lord. Find us faithful, O God. Find us faithful. Kevin, were you able to find that I sent you, brother? Or uh, John, that is good? Take just a moment before I Turn this over to Brian to watch this on the monitors and listen to this song. May it be our prayer today. Yes. You don't have it. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. Pray with me. Father, Find us faithful today. God, uh, help us to be counted on. Lord, help those that are our grandparents today. And I speak metaphorically, but also in reality. There are those that can say their granddaddy, their grandmother is in the service with them today. But to those of us that don't have any grandparents in the service, Lord, today, that, that generation represents those who could be our grandparents, Lord, today. We want them to be at ease and ease of mind in knowing that we're not going to let them down and we're not going to let God down. That no matter what the next 10, 15 years holds for all of us, they can take ease. Oh, God, find us faithful. In Jesus' name. And God's people said with me. Amen. 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 Brian, would you come up here, honey? Choir, you want to go ahead and transition down? Wait a minute. Before you do that, you got anything you want to share, like small children? Parents, do you, if you got children in nursery, you need to go get them now. Um, we, we didn't have children's church today, did we? Or the CIAs or anything? You got anything you want to say? Yes. Brian Gross, everybody. Hey, y'all. Can y'all hear me okay? So if you are not with your family, or if you have children you need to get, please get with your individual families. I do want to be sure that you are with your family for this photo. Um, is there any way that we can turn off the chandeliers? Sure, sure, sure. Perfect. All the lights? Yes, just the chandeliers here. So not the spots, honey? Yes, those as well. Thank you. And people on the balcony, if you could stand I'll probably have you stand for this photo. Thank you so much. Leave the balcony lights on. You want the balcony lights on? Um, so that you can see their faces? Yes. Okay. Yeah, balcony lights back up, please. Thank you, everyone. I'm very excited about this photo. The faster we take it, the faster we get to eat. Awesome. <laughs> Now, Brandon, you want to say any? The parents got small children. Okay. So where they see it, be fine. Okay. From the angle she's going to be in the baptistry, those of you who just got small children, she'll be able to capture those, you know, little ones. So there you go. Everybody, this is a moment to remember. Hold your loved ones tightly. Thank God for them.
Crystal. Y'all going to, Crystal. Y'all going to need to come out and stand up here. <clears throat> Say again? What about it? Oh, yeah, get them out here. Yeah. Thank you, Les. Hey, everybody, also, while you're getting finding your place, write this down. History was made today. I was done preaching at 10 minutes to 12. <laughs> <laughs> Some of y'all heard that one call yesterday and started laughing, didn't you? <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, everybody, just get positioned every how you need to. But be sure you got your loved ones. And again, if you're here by yourself today, and we have many of you who are, we're, we're all family, everybody. We're, we're all family. Ushers, if you could sort of help us see it or note, if there's any others coming from the parking lot, to let, you know, let us know when it's clear to turn it over to her. Hey, everybody, at least we're not standing in the nets, right? Yeah, this is, this is history. Praise the Lord. Okay, uh, Joey, are we, we got people still coming? Two more still coming? Okay. It was just Gene? Okay. Okay. <laughs> No need to worry. Um, Philip, did you see anybody outside? Anybody, my chance? Yes, ma'am. Of course. Sure, sure. Good, good point. Good point. All right. So, looks like we don't see anybody else coming. So. Um, Let's go ahead and do the prayer of blessing for the, of the meal, and that way, when you're done, we can hold, hold down, throw down, let the committee go. Okay, let's 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 do that prayer. Okay, Lord Jesus, thank you again for this time we we'll be together as family. Thank you for everybody who's here, and Lord, we do ask your blessings over the meal as we're getting ready to enjoy that. And um, thank you, Lord, thank you for allowing us all to be a part of this special day. In your name, Amen. All right, Brian, sure. All right, people in the balcony, if you are behind a chandelier, I cannot see you, so please scoot to the side so you can see me and my camera. Perfect. Thank you. All right, guys, ready? Smiling on three. One, two, three. Cheese, good job. <laughs> Let's let the members of the Recreation and Social Committee go and get out. <laughs>